Hey there, what's going on? It's your good buddy, Head of Section from the Being James Bond YouTube channel and podcast. Please check us out, come by and subscribe. And thanks for Pentex for suggesting this collaboration. As we finally approach the release of the new Bond film, Bond 25, No Time to Die. And man, what a long road it's been. But I think it's all going to be well worth it when this movie finally comes out because boy, does it look good. But very luckily, James Bond fans have it over every other franchise in terms of how many films we can look back on. We've got 24 films to rewatch, to discuss, to explore. That is one rich history. And you can be sure that over on my YouTube channel, I have reviewed, explored all of these films at great length. And one of the things I always ask is, what is it about James Bond films that sets it apart from your average everyday action franchise? There is something about classic James Bond that sets it apart from other franchises. And I think a lot of people might guess, well, sure, because James Bond is kind of sophisticated. Tuxedos, locations, cocktails, beautiful women, and all of these things would be true. But if you ask me, there's a secret ingredient. Not all the Bond films even have it, but when they do, boy, does it set itself apart from every other action franchise. I mean, even a bad Bond film. Well, 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 look what the cat dragged in. As one of my good friends would say, they're like sex and pizza. When they're bad, they're still good, but when they're good, they are great. So what do I think the secret ingredient is? What's the one thing that helps a good James Bond film to transcend and become something really magical? If you ask me, the secret ingredient is Ian Fleming. Anytime you have a James Bond film that stays faithful to the original source material, you always get a home run. And sure, they've sort of gone through all the Fleming material they can. When they don't have a Fleming inspiration, they can still make a great spy movie. But there are just some scenes in these films that's kind of like nothing you would ever see anywhere else. Take this scene from Honor Majesty's Secret Service, one of my all-time favorite Bond films. I've been informed of everything you've done for my daughter. Everything? Don't worry. Don't worry about that. What you did, the way you behaved, might be the beginning of some kind of therapy. She needs help. Can you imagine any other franchise having the chutzpah to have James Bond talking to the father of his latest conquest, a well-known mafia boss asking James Bond to date his daughter? I find her fascinating, but she needs a psychiatrist, not me. What she needs is a man to dominate her, to make love to her enough to make her love him. And this is this is dialogue you would never see anywhere else. But one of the signature aspects about James Bond that comes directly from Fleming is the idea that James Bond does battle in very unconventional ways. James Bond frequently does battle across card tables or on the golf course. And it's always so much more interesting than your typical spy drama fights, gunplay, car chases. Again, this is signature Fleming. So take this example. One of my all-time favorite Bond films is 1983's Octopussy. Yes, I could be very nostalgic for this film. Maybe I'm seeing it through rose-colored lenses. After all, it was the first Bond film I ever saw in the theater. But there was always something about this one. I still find in many ways it's one of the most grown-up Bond films. It's so well-written, so well-directed. I would even compare this in some ways to a Hitchcock film. And believe it or not, as a film that came out in the early mid-80s, they had already run out of Fleming books to do, so this one tapped into two short stories to use as an inspiration, which leads me to the scene we're going to talk about. James Bond follows a clue to the Sotheby's auction house in London. Already, we're having tastes of Fleming. The setting is a playhouse for the rich and powerful who share a passion for the finer things in life. So we're already getting the elements of James Bond, But of course, the real attention getter is right about to walk in the room, grabbing James Bond's full attention. There is a lady. But as the scene plays out, we are introduced to the villain of the film. 320,000 pounds, new bidder. That's interesting. You know it. Mm -hmm. Come out, car. Usually a seller. Marginal quality from dubious sources. 380,000 pounds. 400 in the center. When the villain goes overboard bidding on a priceless Fabergé egg, Bond knows something is wrong. So Bond gets involved. 425, you bid on. Thank you, sir. 425. Have you gone mad? Let's see how badly he wants it. The bidding war continues until the villain has just paid half a million pounds. 500,000 pounds. 500,000 pounds way over the value of what this egg should have gotten. 
thereby exposing the villain for who he is, someone who desperately needed this egg. This is no longer about just being an art collector, something is wrong. But therein lies the beauty of Ian Fleming, and that secret ingredient I was talking about. Bond has just engaged in battle with an adversary in a very unusual setting. Again, it could have been a card table, a golf course, but in this case, an auction house. And the way the scene plays out, the reactions from the other people in the auction, tells us that tensions are high. It's a great scene from what I think is an incredibly underrated film. If you're looking for an old Bond film to check out while you wait for no time to die, I definitely recommend Octopussy. And that's one of my favorite scenes and why I think it explains the secret ingredient to James Bond, author Ian Fleming. Once again, be sure to check out my YouTube channel and subscribe. And thank you, Pentex, for the opportunity to collaborate. Take care and enjoy No Time to Die.